55 past the hour, the U.S. Supreme Court has just a couple of hours to make a big decision regarding the future of a controversial Texas immigration law. The justices have until 5 p.m. Eastern today to decide whether to allow Senate Bill 4 to take effect or keep it on hold. The bill allows Texas law enforcement officers to arrest migrants who illegally cross the border from Mexico. With us now to talk more about this, NBC News correspondent David Noriega and Alan Orr, immigration attorney, past president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. So, David, what are the main things this law in Texas would do? Hey, Jose. So as of now, the act of crossing the border without authorization between ports of entry is a misdemeanor under federal law only. What this law would do is make that a misdemeanor under Texas state law. That has a lot of implications. It would allow Texas law enforcement, police, sheriffs, DPS, etc., to arrest uh, migrants, to arrest anyone suspected of crossing the border illegally. It would allow those people to be prosecuted under state courts. And perhaps most interestingly, it would allow Texas judges to issue de facto deportation orders. Now, if this law is allowed to go into effect, that last point is one of the most interesting and one of the ones raising the most questions. As you know, deportations are complicated processes that involve binational agreements between the United States and whichever other country a person is being removed to. That's not something that's ever, that's why it's done by federal authorities. It's not something that's ever been done by state authorities. And from the people that I've spoken to on the ground, it's very unclear, completely unclear how removals would actually be carried out by anyone other than the federal authorities who already carry them out. There are a lot of questions about how this law could actually be implemented on the ground. The general expectation from people on the ground is that if the law is allowed to stand and go into effect today, the results would be pretty chaotic. Jose? And I mean, Alan, how does this Texas law compare with SB 1070 in Arizona? It was, what, 14, more than 14 years ago? Much of that law ended up being tossed out by courts. And the same thing should happen because these are very similar laws. These are show me your papers, stop and frisk laws, which really are an attack against racial Americans who are going to be stopped and harassed and maybe even jailed inappropriately. The failed Long Star program of Texas is part of the reason that he's pushing for this right to be able to arrest individuals. And there is no treaty that will allow him to deport anyone. And more importantly, local officers are not trained in immigration law. They aren't able to access the systems to see what someone's status really is. So they'll just be taking a guess in the dark based on someone's language and appearance. And, and so, Alan, the, the fact is that you can agree or disagree with how it's being handled or it's been handled, but it is a right for people to request asylum, right? I mean, that's kind of like a basic right. You can agree or disagree how that's been handled recently, but, but this is actually kind of also coming in and defining what asylum is or isn't. Absolutely. And you've already seen Texas bus around 102,000 individuals for almost $150 million, which doesn't seem like a good use of money. And if Congress wanted to change asylum, they could have done it, which was something in the bill they passed on just recently. So if they choose not to change asylum, then asylum stands. And individuals who show up at the border who are allowed in the country who get an NTA are individuals who are in the country by operation of law and therefore not undocumented or, as some would say, illegal. And that's kind of an important thing you just said. So if you come in and you request asylum and you're allowed in where the process is going through, you are not uh, here illegally. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're here to the operation of our the operation of our law, seeking your court date. David Noriega and Eleanor, thank you both so much for being with us. Once again, the Supreme Court has until 5 p.m. today, Eastern time, to decide one way or another on that Texas law.